Hi, beautiful friends and bookish fam. My name is Brittany. This is Rescues and Reads. Thank you so much for joining me here today. If you are new, welcome. I'm so glad to have you. And if you're already subscribed, as always, I appreciate your continued support. Thank you for returning to another video. Today, we are here to build my perfect romance book. All right, everybody. So if you are watching this video on the day that it is posted, it is actually Valentine's Day. And in full transparency, I am not a Valentine's Day girly. I am actually a Valentine's Day Grinch. There's just something about this day that rubs me the wrong way. And even though everybody claims that it's a day to celebrate love, I really feel like we should be celebrating love every single day of the year. And I don't need a reason to celebrate love. So there's just something really hokey about this day to me that I don't appreciate. However, I do really love a good love story. And even though romance is not my main genre, some of my favorite books on this planet are romance. Romances. I have really come to learn a lot about myself as a romance reader over the past, I would say, year or two. And one of the reasons why I don't read romance and why I'm far more likely to unhaul a romance book without reading it than I am any other genre is because a lot of romances out there really don't work for me because they do a lot of things that really annoy me. And so I thought it would be fun to come on here and chat about what makes a perfect romance for me. Things that I really need to see in a romance book in order for it to be a top tier, potentially five star romance read. So that's what we are going to talk about today. Now, to give you a bit of context. Some of my favorite romances of all time that we will use as a standard are books like Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez and The Simple Wild by K.A. Tucker. And I find that they contain a lot of the similar elements that I'm going to talk about here that I need to see in a romance book. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump in. So perhaps the top most important thing for me about a romance is that it needs to be slow burn. Now there are several reasons why I feel a slow burn is like the right way or the most appropriate way to write a romance. And so some of those points are actually going to be talked about a little bit later in this video, but some of the main reasons why I need a slow burn in order to make this a potentially five star reading experience is the fact that I need time to invest in the characters and their relationship. If we're going from zero to 100 in a matter of pages, I have no investment in that relationship. And not only that, I do not believe in that relationship. I am a very character driven reader. I need to fully appreciate and connect to and potentially even relate to the characters in order for me to care about their relationship. And so when we have an instant love situation. Not only am I not invested in that relationship, but I don't buy it. I don't buy that these main characters should be together. So a slow burn is very, very important for me in order to get that investment into the relationship. In addition, during that time, while we're getting to know the characters independently as well as together, this also gives the author an opportunity to build the sexual tension. In order for me to really root for a relationship, I need to be able to cut that sexual tension with a knife. I need the chemistry in this book to be palpable. I need it to be so built up that by the time the characters actually get together, you as a reader are just shouting for joy. This is the moment that we are waiting for. I do not believe that you get those moments in books that have more insta-love or fast-paced romances. If I'm feeling that sexual tension, if I'm feeling that palpable chemistry, that's another reason why I'm going to buy into this relationship, why I'm going to invest into this relationship, why I'm going to want to see these characters together no matter the odds. Another thing that I notice in books that are not really truly slow burn is that authors will have the main characters meet and then instantaneously these two characters are like eye fucking each other. They're undressing each other with their eyes. And then going forward, they can't help but talk about how hot they think the other person is. And to me, this is a very tell not show way of getting the reader to understand how good looking these characters are and why they should be together and why they have chemistry. And to be quite frank, it's obnoxious when that's done over and over. When anytime these two main characters are in a room with each other, they can't stop thinking about how hot the other person is and how the girl completely loses her shit and is completely unable to be a coherent, thinking, competent person because that other guy's in the room just being hot. I think it's a very lazy way of storytelling. A good romance is going to make you be able to feel the attraction. They're going to build up that sexual tension. They're going to be able to make you feel the chemistry. It's going to be palpable. And furthermore, what I have found happens in a relationship that comes to fruition way too early in the book is that the author then spends the remainder of the book putting in unnecessary conflict in order to further the plot, in order to make it a book. If you have a relationship that goes from zero to in a relationship within the first half of the book, what is the author going to include in the other 200 pages? They have to throw something into the book in order to make it worthwhile. And I'm not talking about a third act breakup here because I don't necessarily mind a third act breakup when it's legitimate. And I'll get into more of that in a second. But what I found in romances where the relationship starts too soon is that a lot of the conflict that they throw in is very ridiculous. It is absolutely unnecessary. It is very hard to buy that this conflict even needs to be there or exist. And it actually takes me out of the story and it stops me rooting for 
for the relationship. So it comes to be like a pacing thing at this point. It went too fast, it burnt out, and now the author has to put some angst and drama in there in order to fuel the rest of the story. Now y'all know that I'm not against angst. I do love an angsty romance when it actually makes sense, but it really doesn't make sense if the characters are in a truly healthy, loving relationship, and then all of a sudden you're including things that just come out of nowhere and have no reason to be there, and I absolutely hate that. So all of these things I feel like go into a proper slow burn romance, and these are not things that I typically witness in a story where the characters have gone from zero to 100, or it's very insta-love, or things like that. So slow burn almost all the time has to be a factor in a romance that I'm giving five stars. And kind of going back to the fact that I'm a character-driven reader, I also require developed characters. And as I mentioned with a slow burn, one of the reasons that you're getting invested in the relationship is because you are learning about the characters both individually and when they're together. I really want to know about this love interest and their past and their baggage and everything that they're going through and their personality and their family. And I want to learn about this main character separately. And then I want to know all of those things as they are coming together. And I want to learn about them as a couple when they're first meeting, as they're getting to know each other, as they're just building that connection and that bond and that foundation that you don't get in other fast burning relationship stories. As a character driven reader, I really need to feel that connection again in order to root for the relationship and believe in the relationship and want to see the relationship come to fruition. If it doesn't have those things, if I feel the characters are underdeveloped, if I feel like they are flat or static and they lack personality, I'm going to be less invested in their relationship even if I do think that they might have good sexual tension and palpable chemistry. So well-developed characters also lend a huge part into the books that I have rated five stars. Another thing a solid romance really needs to have is a harder hitting element. This is one of the reasons why I'm not the biggest fan of rom-coms because they are just a little bit too light and fluffy for me and they lack the substance that I'm looking for in a romance. A lot of the romances that I rate five stars have really big harder hitting elements that really come together and tear the characters apart. They are things that they have to overcome and this is what I mean when I say that I don't mind a third act breakup when it makes sense. To give you an example, part of your world, if you read the story, you'll understand what I'm talking about. These two main characters are from very different worlds. You have our main character Alexis who is an ER doctor. She comes from a very prestigious line of medical doctors and she's kind of expected to keep up the legacy of this family. She knows that her family is never going to approve of Daniel who is very blue collar, very salt of the earth, very work with his hands and things like that. And there are other things at play going on here but eventually because of that, because they are so different and they come from such different backgrounds, they are essentially split apart even though they don't want to be split apart. It's something that makes sense in the natural course of the progression of the story. It doesn't feel like it's just thrown in there for dramatic purposes, but what it helps do is it helps you feel the loss of the relationship and makes you want them desperately to be back together. And I'm going to kind of use this to segue into one of the last points that I need in terms of a perfect romance is that I need raw emotions. So kind of again, using part of your world as an example, during this third act breakup, so to speak, when you are absolutely committed to the relationship between Alexis and Daniel and you want them to be together because you love them both individually and you love them together. They are wonderful people. They deserve to be together. They deserve to be happy. And then of course something comes and splits them apart and you are just as a reader, you are dying inside. You are feeling the emotions of these characters. I remember reading part of your world and my chest just ached. Like it felt as though I was going through the breakup with these characters. It reminded me of emotions that I had felt during my own past breakups and the pain that comes along with it. It's just heartbreak is just such a complicated emotion. And Abby Jimenez was able to make me feel the heartbreak of these characters. It just made me more emotionally invested in the story and I really wanted to see what the outcome was going to be. I wanted to see how these two main characters were going to be able to overcome the odds and be together and how overcoming those odds was going to make them stronger as a couple, if that makes sense. So we have a relationship that is fully fleshed out and fully developed along with the characters who you get to know each individually. You get to connect to them both separately and together. You root for their relationship, feel the chemistry, you feel the attraction, and then something comes as harder hitting element is tossed in and it adds that bit of depth and substance that I'm looking for in a romantic story. I don't want the relationship to be easy because I don't feel that that's realistic. Do I want them to have a happily ever after at the end? Absolutely, of course I do. But I need there to be some kind of obstacles in order for them to get there. And kind of going on a little bit of a tangent here, speaking of that happily ever after, you don't typically see books that follow those characters after they've gotten their happily ever after and the honeymoon phase is over. So kind of going to The Simple Wild. The Simple Wild is that grumpy sunshine hate to love romance where they get together, they build up to a relationship, they finally get together, you feel it, you want them to be together, and then you get into the second book, which is all about them building into that relationship, moving in together, the struggles that come along with that, the misunderstandings, and all of the stuff that can go with this relationship that is now out of the honeymoon phase, and the 
the realistic aspects of that. But I loved that second book almost as much as I loved the first book because of that, because I was seeing a different side to their relationship. But I believed in these characters so much and I loved them and I rooted for them. And it just added a layer of complexity to their relationship. So since we do not typically get the after the honeymoon phase portion with a lot of these relationships, I do like to see how they are able to handle the harder hitting conflicts that come their way in the book and what they're going to do to be together. So those harder hitting elements, those raw emotions, they all come together to make a fully fleshed out, well-rounded, substantial reading experience in a romance. So definitely some of the main points that I need to see in a romance. I need to see slow burn. I need to feel that sexual tension, have the palpable chemistry. I need to have really well-developed, fleshed out characters, both individually and together. I need to be able to root for their relationship and invest in that relationship. I need a harder hitting element in order to add depth and substance to it. And then I need those raw emotions. I need to be able to feel what the characters are feeling. And I feel like if I am feeling those things, then I'm emotionally connected to the story. And that is something that's almost always going to get a five stars for me. If a book can make me that emotional and even to the point of crying, I think that it is a solid romance read and it deserves acknowledgement. So those are some of the main points that I need to see in order for a romance to be perfect for me. I would love to know what you typically look for in a romance. What makes a romance five stars for you? Please comment down below and let me know some of that below. I am sure that I'm not covering everything for me that really goes into a perfect romance, but those are just some of the main things that I look for and I would love to know what you look for. Or if you've made it to the end of this video and you are not feeling chatty, go ahead and leave me some kind of love emoji down below. Maybe it's a heart, maybe it's a couple emoji, whatever you want, go ahead and leave me a love emoji in honor of February 14th, Valentine's Day. And as always, if you like this video or if you just like me, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already. I post two videos a week on Wednesdays and Sundays and I would love to connect with you in any of those future videos or on any of my other social media platforms, which I always leave linked down below along with the books that I may talk about in the video. Until next time, y'all. Bye.